In most real-world situations, we're not actually going to be able to compute the value of an infinite series. But we still want to have some number. We want to be able to say if I take the first 10 terms, or the first 100 terms, or the first 1000 terms, that that is sufficient for whatever my application happens to be. So suppose we have some series and we know that it converges. Maybe we know that it converges by, say, the integral test. We want to know how many terms do I have to include until I have whatever the level of accuracy that I might be demanded by my application. And so we're going to be able to use the comparison to improper integrals again to figure out how many terms do I actually need to have in my series to get some particular required level of accuracy. And indeed, it was worthwhile noting that while we could get an improper integral and we could figure out the value of that improper integral, the value of the improper integral was not the same thing as the sum of the series. The one converged if the other converged, but they didn't necessarily converge to the same value. So let's introduce some notation. We've previously seen that Sn was our standard notation for the partial sums, and it represented A1 plus A2 plus 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 all the way down to Am. What I'm going to define now is something new, and I'm going to call it the remainder, I'm going to use capital R, sub M. And what it is, is all of the rest of the terms. It, it's everything beyond the partial sum of Sn. In other words, it's the A n plus 1, plus a n plus 2, and then so on. So while the partial sum is a finite sum from 1 all the way up to n, the remainder is all the other things from n plus 1 all the way up to infinity. And so the way this might work is, suppose I, I want to compute the value of a series, I might compute a value like s100 or s1000 or s1 million. And then I want to know, that's not the whole series, I also have this sort of infinite tail, but I want to figure out what Rn is. I, I want to figure out how bad is the remainder, how bad is this infinite tail. So I'm going to try to represent this as I did with the integral test. In other words, I'm going to give myself some axes. I'm going to give some function that's coming down here. This is the function f of x. And I'm imagining that it has the, the property that f evaluated at n is just going to be equal to all the different ans. I might have, for example, at some point, like this one, I'll call that n. And then if I think about what Rn is, it's a n plus 1 plus a n plus 2 and so on. It is the sum of all of these points here. There's the a n plus 1, the a n plus 2, and so on down the line. And then if I think about a sum of numbers, this is the same thing as a sum of the areas of rectangles, where the areas of the rectangles are going to have width 1 and then height whatever the corresponding numbers are. In other words, I can give a sort of right approximation here. This right approximation that I'm drawing for the area under the curve is the same thing as my remainder. So in other words, this part under here, these areas of the rectangles, this is going to be my Rn. And then what I can observe is that because my function is positive, it is decreasing and it is continuous, this right approximation that I've done, the, the sum of these rectangles, in other words, the, the remainder, this is strictly less than the area under the curve. So this Rn that I've computed, whatever the value is, it is less than the integral from n up to infinity of f of x dx. In other words, I've been able to give myself a bound on this remainder term. It is less than some particular improper integral that starts at the value of n. I'm going to repeat this story again. I'm going to have n down on the bottom, and I'm also going to put in n plus 1 here. Because if I plug in all of my points, this is my remainder, the n plus, a n plus 1, the a n plus 2, and so on down the line, this time, instead of using a right approximation, I'm going to use a left approximation. So that means that my rectangle is going to look like this. It's going to look like this. It's going to look like this, and so on down the line. And this particular area that I have here, it is also going to be Rn. Indeed, it's just a sum of rectangles of width 1 and height, the am plus 1, the am plus 2, and so on. But the difference is, now this is a left approximation for the integral not from n to infinity, from n plus 1 to infinity. And again, because my function is decreasing and continuous and positive, we get that now the, the remainder, it is bigger on every instance 
It is bigger than the integral between n plus 1 and infinity of f of x dx. So in other words, I've, I've managed to use two very slightly different integrals, one starting at n and one starting at n plus 1, and my remainder term, the a n plus 1 all the way down to infinity, that is sort of sandwiched between the two of these. And I can represent this as a particular theorem. I am going to say that in this scenario, my r n is indeed bounded by these improper integrals when my function is a continuous positive and decreasing function. And you get an analysis result if you have a continuous negative and increasing function. Now, the main way that we're actually going to use this is, is actually the right-hand side. Uh, because what we really want to do is we want to have our remainder be well controlled. We want it to be not that large of a value. So what I can do is figure out how big this right integral is. I can figure out how big the integral from n to infinity is. And then as long as that number is something small, whatever my accuracy needs to be based on my application that I'm doing, then if I demand that level of accuracy, it's going to tell me the n I need to use and my remainder is always going to be less than that required level of accuracy. Okay, so let's see an example of how this actually applies. So here I have a specific example. I've got the sum of 3 divided by n to the power of 4. And I want to be able to estimate what that sum is. I don't know what it is exactly, but I want to estimate it to within 0.001 of whatever its true value is. That is to say, I want the remainder term, rn here, to be less than or equal to the 0.01. And I don't even know what n is yet. That's something we're going to have to figure out. But what I do know is that I can compare the rn to the integral from n up to infinity of 3 divided by x to the power of 4 dx. I can compare it to an improper integral. And I know how to evaluate improper integrals, so I can just do that. So what I get is just 1 over n cubed. And following my chain of inequalities, that's the remainder rn is less than or equal to 1 over n cubed. And what I claim that I want this to be equal to is 0.001. That's what I want. I want my remainder, this guy all the way on the left, be less than or equal to 0.01, which is the same thing as 1 over 1,000. And that tells me that n has to be equal to the number 10. So now I know that if I take 10 terms, then if I take that sum, the sum of just the first 10s, then it is within 0.001 of whatever the true value is. Now it's actually just a pain just from a calculator perspective to go and compute what the sum of 10 different things are going to be, but I can use, say, Wolfram Alpha to be able to do this. So this is Wolfram Alpha, which is just a really powerful tool, and uh, you can do all sorts of different things, like, for example, integrals, but I'm going to do a sum, and I'm going to do the sum from 1 to 10 of 3 divided by n to the power of 4, which was the sum that I was going to do. And it goes away and computes it for me. It tells me that the value of this thing is equal to 3.24. So in other words, 3.24 is within 0.001 of being the value of this series.